In this video, I'm going to talk about defining the value of a trigonometric function of any angle. Up until this point, all of our focus has been on trigonometric functions of acute angles, and what we want to do is expand that definition to be able to apply to any angle. So here's the definition. So when we have an angle in standard position, we want to pick a point a comma b that's on the terminal side of that angle. And then we write r to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now r here is just going to be the distance from the origin to that point that we pick. So this distance from 0, 0 to a comma b, just using my distance formula, that's going to give me square root of a squared plus b squared. And then notice that our six trigonometric functions are defined to be ratios very similar to the ratios that we had in a right triangle. And in fact, if you compare these formulas to the formulas that we had before, the only difference is that instead of C, which was the hypotenuse of our right triangle, all of the C's have been replaced with R's. Other than that, these are the exact same definitions. So we've got two big questions here. The first question is, does it matter which point A comma B we pick? We're going to answer that question in a second. And then the second question is, does this new definition match up with the existing definition that we already had? And that's important because if we want to talk about the sine of an angle, we don't want to have to worry about which definition we're using. We just want to be able to talk about the sine of that angle. So that's an important question for us to consider as well. Okay, so let's think about, does it matter if we pick a different point? Well, what we're going to see is that if we did pick a different point, we would just get two similar triangles and the ratios in those two similar triangles would be equal because of properties of similar triangles. So it turns out that this is actually a pretty good definition in the sense that it doesn't matter which point you pick. You can pick whatever point a comma b you want. For the second question, does this match our previous definition? It turns out that it does because if I pick the point a comma b, then this distance, that is the x-coordinate of the point that I pick. This vertical distance, that's the y-coordinate of the point I pick. And then the hypotenuse really is the distance from 0 comma 0 to a comma b. So Sokotoa, opposite over hypotenuse, all of that stuff does apply in the case where my angle is an acute angle. All of this matches up with the definitions that we already had. So let's look at an example here. So let's suppose that we had an angle that's in standard position and 2 comma negative 1 is a point on the terminal side of theta. So the picture here would be that I have my angle, 2 comma negative 1 is down here. So that means that this is the terminal side of my angle. Now, as we've seen before, we can have many different angles that could have that as its terminal side. So one way that we could have this angle would be a counterclockwise rotation that ends up like that. We don't really know which angle this is. All we know is that 2 comma negative 1 is on the terminal side. But that's all we need to know to be able to figure out the six trigonometric functions. So the sine of theta is going to be b over r. The cosine of theta is going to be a over r. The tangent of theta is going to be b over a. The cotangent of theta is going to be a over b. The secant of theta is going to be r over a. And the cosecant of theta is going to be r over b. OK, so what are a, b, and r? Well, a and b are easy to figure out because a is the x-coordinate of your point and b is the y-coordinate of your point. And then r is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. That's going to be the square root of 5. So that allows me to fill in my values now. So b over r, that's going to be negative 1 divided by the square root of 5. a over r, that's going to be 2 over the square root of 5 b over a, that's going to be negative 1 divided by 2. a over b, that's going to be 2 divided by negative 1. r over a, that'll be the square root of 5 divided by 2. And then r over b, that'll be the square root of 5 divided by negative 1. Now notice one thing you'll see here is that for this angle, some of these trigonometric function values are negative. That was never something that could happen for us when we had acute angles. But now that we're expanding our definition into being any kind of angle, we're seeing that sometimes our trig function values will be negative. Let's do another example. So here we have a specific angle. In the previous example, we didn't know what the angle was, but we just knew something about the terminal side. Here I'm giving you a specific angle, so the sine of 3 pi over 2. Now some folks 
uh, it, it makes sense to convert this to degrees. So if that makes more sense to you, then we'll go ahead and do that. So if we want to convert this to degrees, we're going to multiply 3 pi over 2, multiply that by 180 over pi. That's going to work out to be 270 degrees. So what does that angle look like? It's a positive angle, which means it's a counterclockwise rotation. 270 degrees, again, breaking this down a little bit, that's 3 times 90. 90 is a quarter turn, so that means we're going 3 quarters of a revolution around in the counterclockwise direction. So that's what my 270 degree angle, also known as 3 pi over 2 radians, that's what my angle looks like. So the definition says I can pick my favorite point, any point that I want, other than the origin, on that terminal side. In this case, the terminal side is the negative y-axis, so I can pick whichever point I want on this negative y-axis. So how about 0, comma, negative 6? That's a point on the negative y-axis, so that's the point that I'll use. So as we said before, A is going to be the x-coordinate, B is going to be the y-coordinate, and R is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared, and so that's going to work out to be 6. That'll be 0 squared plus negative 6 squared, so r is positive 6. Remember, r is always going to be positive because r is the distance from the origin to that point. So in this case, r is this distance, is the number 6. Okay, so if we look at our formula, the formula says that sine, the definition that we talked about in, earlier in this uh, video, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be b over r, which in this case is going to be negative 6 divided by positive 6, that's going to be negative 1. And I, as a sort of a challenge problem, if, you want, if you're not sure about this, pick a different point. Pick a different point on the negative y-axis, and you'll see that the sine value is still negative 1. It doesn't matter which point we pick, as long as we pick a point that we know for sure is on our negative y-axis, is on our terminal side. So 3 pi over 2 is an example of what we call a quadrantal angle. It's a little bit of a clunky word, but it just means that the terminal side of our angle, when it's in standard position, lies along the x or the y axis. And those are angles that where it's particularly not too difficult to figure out what the values of the trig functions are, very much like what we just did in the previous example. Because we can pick whichever point we want, it's easy to think of a point that's on the x or the y axis. This is maybe a little bit trickier to think about points that are on different lines, but the axis is pretty easy. And so if we work that out, what we're going to see is the values of trigonometric functions of these angles. Now, important to note here, these are not the only quadrantal angles there are. Notice that in each case I'm going up by 90 degrees. I could keep going. 360, 360 degrees, 450, 540, etc, etc. I could also keep going negative. I could go negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, etc. So we don't have to think that this is a complete list of all the quadrantal angles because it's not. But what we want to notice is that sometimes our trig functions are undefined. So let's think about our 270 degrees again. Let's think about why the tangent is undefined. Well, if I pick the point negative six, uh, sorry, zero comma negative six again, so remember we had a was zero, b was negative six, r was six. Well, tangent is b over a. b divided by a in this case is negative six divided by zero, and that's why this is undefined, because we can't divide by zero. So what we're seeing here is that for these quadrantal angles, for some of these quadrantal angles, some of our trig function values are undefined, and that's because the formulas would require us to divide by zero, which we're not allowed to do. So let's do another example. This one is not a quadrantal angle, but as you'll see, we're going to be able to figure out the value of this function using some knowledge that we already have. So negative 330 degrees. Remember, a negative angle represents a clockwise rotation. And if we think to ourselves, 330, gosh, that's almost 360. So that means that we're rotating clockwise, almost one full revolution, but we stop a little bit short. And where do we stop short? Well, we stop short leaving 30 degrees left over. Because if we had gone 360, that would have been one complete revolution. So negative 330 degrees is going to get us to the point, the same terminal side that we would have ended up with if we had instead rotated positive 30 degrees.
Well, if it's the same terminal side, remember, the values of our trig functions only depend on the values of the terminal side. So that means that the cosine of 330, negative 330 degrees should have the exact same value as the cosine of 30 degrees, because whatever point I might pick on this terminal side, that's the same terminal side as positive 30 degrees. But I know what the cosine of 30 degrees is. That's one of my special angles. And so we just know that that's square root of 3 over 2 using the geometric uh, considerations that we talked about in a previous video. So this is an example of what we call a coterminal angle. So two angles in standard position are coterminal if their terminal sides are the same. So co meaning the same and terminal meaning uh, the terminal side. So two angles are coterminal exactly when they differ by some whole number of full rotations. So the two angles that we talked about in the previous video, negative 330 and positive 30, those, were, those differed from each other by 360. So in other words, negative 330 degrees, if I added 360 to that, that gave me 30 degrees. And that's why those angles were coterminal, is because the difference between those two angles was one full rotation. If the difference between the angles had been more or less than one full rotation, then they would not have had the same terminal side. If the difference was two whole rotations, then they would have the same terminal side. If the difference between the angles was five full rotations, then they would have the same terminal side. And because those angles have the same terminal side, the point that we would pick on that terminal side is the same point, which means I get the same A, the same B, the same R, which means all six trigonometric functions are going to have the same values. So on this slide, I'm just presenting that argument in algebraic form, right? So all I'm saying is that if you take an angle theta and add 2 pi times k to it, where k is an integer, well, 2 pi, that's one full rotation. So if I add k, that's going to be k full rotations. And so those angles are going to be coterminal. And then over here, I'm saying the same thing just with degrees. So 360 degrees, that's one full rotation multiplied by k, that's going to be differing by k full rotations. And so any integer, any whole number k, positive or negative, right? So I could subtract some number of full revolutions from my angle, and I would still have the same terminal side. So this is just an algebraic way of saying the thing that we said in the previous slide. Okay, so what have we done in this video? We've talked about defining trigonometric functions of any angle using a point on the terminal side of the angle. We talked about a special case of quadrantal angles where it's easy to find a point on that terminal side. And then we've also talked about coterminal angles, which are two angles that have the same terminal side, and so therefore they have the same va uh, values of their trigonometric functions. In the next video, I'm going to talk about something called reference angles, which is going to be a technique that we can use to find the exact value of trigonometric functions in many special cases.